Hello, Ramley and other family. I'm Peo Time. Welcome to episode two of Ram's Breakfast Club. This is uh, the show that uh, comes out every Monday morning after a Rams game. Uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, the Rams did fall to the Arizona Cardinals uh, yesterday. And uh, we're going to talk about that, do the five takeaways, and uh, also k- update on the Kurt Warner uh, 01 season versus the 2021 Matt Stafford season. So thanks for being here. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And let's roll intro. Wake up, wake up, wipe your eyes and set your alarm clocks to pay old time. It's time to get your morning started up. And tune into the Rams Breakfast Club. Waking up ain't easy, there's growing pains Come greet the morning and let's move them chains Pour some hot black java in your commuter cup And tune in to the Rams Breakfast Club and Tune in to the Rams Breakfast Club Yes, Good morning to everyone. This is the Rams Breakfast Club, and uh, I hope you have your hot beverage, your tea, your coffee, your hot chocolate, whatever your hot beverage of choice is, and take a sip. Anyway, let's get to this. Here are the five takeaways from yesterday's game. And, you know, the saying is you learn more from a loss than you do a win. And uh, I there, I had a lot of things I could have put in here, uh, but I decided to pick these five things because uh, there are five things that I think are important to highlight. Uh, but let me know what your take war- takeaways are in the comments below, uh, you know, because, we you know, we all see things different. I enjoy hearing perspectives unlike my own, but here are my takeaways. So number one, over-targeting cup. Uh, has its limits. He had five catches on 13 targets for 64 yards. And when you look at the targets that he got, Stafford did miss him. Uh, All the passes weren't like Chris. They weren't the darts that Stafford's usually throwing. Stafford, he was off. Uh, You know, we don't need to hide that. We don't need to, you know, we we don't need to try and, you know, protect his feelings. He's a professional He'll, he would admit on his own, uh, he was very critical of his own performance in his press conference. So yeah, that's that's on Stafford, and uh, that's something he can clean up. This loss is not solely on Stafford, though. Don't worry, we'll get into it. But however, when you have a receiver that you're targeting that much and the defense is able to take him away, we needed to get Robert Woods or Van Jefferson or Deshaun Jackson more involved earlier in this game. It, it almost broke my heart seeing Robert Wood score a garbage time touchdown when you're like, okay, like why couldn't we get him in earlier? Like where were the jet sweeps? Where were the, you know, just the, the simple screens on first and second down, never want to see a third and long bubble screen, but where, where was the creativity on that? And I, I, I do think that Sean McVay's offense played a little uninspired at times uh, in, in yesterday's game. And we're going to talk more about that in another point when we talk about Sean McVay. But uh, to finish off this point with Cooper Cup, we love Super Cup. We love him. But maybe we need a little more of, you know, an Avengers team here, you know, with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup and Van Jefferson. And this is a really talented wide receiving core. And it not that, you know, we, we don't think that Cooper Cup isn't one of the best wide receivers in football because – he absolutely is, but when we were playing a you know a team that obviously had game planned to stop Cooper Cup, uh, you know we have to you know find other ways to get these yards to get down the field, score the touchdowns, and the reality is our red zone uh, game this week was not good. We you know out of our three attempts in there, we only scored one touchdown, uh, and a couple and two of those we didn't come up with any points, so. That you know, that's the telltale all. But yes, we gotta keep other people involved in this offense. It's a talented team, but still early in the year. We can correct this. Point number two: 
Seven penalties in the first three games. That's amazing. Disciplined football. Love that the Rams only had seven penalties. But in week four against the Cardinals, we had five penalties, which I know there's other teams that are more penalized. But when you're a team with Super Bowl aspirations, you can't have dumb penalties. And 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 there were just and and I know you can blame the refs and and refs make mistakes or things like that, but the reality is there were some of those penalties that were valid, and we need to you know as a team clean those up and play disciplined football. Hopefully, this isn't something that you know I don't want to be getting seven to ten penalties each and every game, uh, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's just something that I, I noticed that, you know, that five is a significant increase from what we were going for when you have seven over the first three games. And I think we only had one against the Bucks. Anyway, we need we need to clean that up. Takeaway number three. After a great coaching performance versus the Bucks, McVeigh and Morris made mistakes in play calling. Let's call it like it is. Uh, it was not our best game from a coaching standpoint um mcveigh at times you felt he should have been a little more aggressive especially early on uh the rams lost control of that game and uh you know the any team will play better when they get to dictate the flow of the game and i i just think that when we were moving the ball with daryl henderson who we'll, we'll talk about shortly why couldn't we keep that up you know, why Why couldn't we keep the run game going at a steady pace uh, early on? Because it seemed like that first scoring drive, Daryl Henderson really led that drive down the field. Uh, you know, Stafford ultimately got the, the touchdown pass, which is great to Van Jefferson. But we, we need to have a balanced offense, uh, especially when we're playing a good team like the Cardinals. So, there, you know, there's that. Now, Raheem Morris, you he's going to get criticized a lot by the Ram fans this weekend. I think rightfully so. Uh, we, he's been criticized for this bend but don't break defense since week one. And today it broke. It broke. And I'm hoping that there's some you know tweaks and adjustments that can be made. It doesn't all go on Raheem Morris. Uh, there's definitely some players. Uh, you know, David Long definitely comes to mind. Uh, you know, there, there's some players that can, can fall, fall to blame, but I am, I'm one of my takeaways here is just Raheem Morris. We need, uh, you know, better blitzing schemes. We need, especially when we're playing a guy like Kyler Murray that can really run around, we need to be able to contain him more, not let him get up to the outside to plant his foot, keep him off balance. And, uh, that just did not happen today. Kyler Murray played great. But we just because he, you're playing a great player doesn't mean that you can't make his life more difficult. And the Rams didn't do a lot to make his life more difficult today. So definitely that's that's a takeaway. Now, if you know me, I, I do like to be optimistic. But after a loss like this, you do have to highlight some of these points. And I'm sure many of you will comment below, which is what, what I want to hear from each of you. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out here to... Uh, Daryl Henderson and the O-line, they played well. They only had 14 carries for 89 yards, but they also didn't give up a sack. Uh, and I do think that there were maybe times Stafford was under a bit of pressure, but he had a relatively clean pocket, and he just missed some guys. But the O-line, I think, played really well, especially uh, this Arizona front seven is good. Uh, they, you know, they're definitely one of the top-tier uh, defensive lines in the league. And I think our line held their own there. And, you know, uh, Brian Allen had that one penalty, which is unfortunate, which, you know, he hasn't been doing. Uh, but Henderson looked good. I, again, I'm glad that Henderson looked healthy. I think our team is better when we have Henderson in there. Uh, Sony Michelle had the fumble, and I don't think we saw him the rest of the game. So he'll definitely have to clean that up. Uh, I know it was punched out, but you just can't. You can't fumble like that. But, yeah, Henderson, definitely looking forward to more of him. Uh, I think that this is, you know, a very friendly Daryl Henderson offense. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do when we don't abandon the run so early. Because, again, I feel like even when we were just one score down, Sean McVay kind of abandoned the run for the most part. And that was just too early. You know, Stafford is fantastic. 
But when you can have a balanced offense and not become one dimensional, any football team does better. And the Rams are no exception to that. All right. And my fifth and final takeaway, and there's so many go to, but I, I really think it's important to highlight this is the cards are a good team. The sky is not falling. It's week four. We are still a three and one team and we still have time to get it right. It's a long season ahead of us. It's an even longer season, right? It's 17 games. Um, I don't think that this is, uh, you know, it, it's a game you absolutely learn from and it's a humbled loss. Uh, no moral victories or anything like that. You know, the, you have to tell it like it is that it's unfortunate and it is a tough loss. I did, I don't like losing, especially to divisional opponents, but it is early in the season. There's still time for the defense to correct these, you know, these, if it's a scheming error, there's times for defense to, to adjust and absolutely prepare uh, to, you know, to succeed in the future. We, we, we've seen that before. And I think back to last season, even that game against Buffalo, where we we gave up a lot of yards to the Buffalo Bills. We were able to come back in that game and almost win it, but it was kind of after that game that this defense really started to come into their own towards the end of the season. So I'm hoping that this loss will help really highlight some of these adjustments that need to be made from a scheme perspective, and I'm hoping Raheem Morris you know, and, and the rest of the defensive coaching staff can really put their heads together, uh, you know, fix what needs to be fixed. I don't claim to be an expert on, on defense, but I do know that defenses, if they go game after game after game and they get gouged the way that they did today, that sets in and it, you know, other teams watch tape. They look for the weaknesses. They look for the players to pick on. And I expect David long to get picked on a lot. <laughs> um, and so, you know, maybe we think about putting Berg, uh, Trail Berg, Burgess in there. Uh, you know, Robert Rochelle maybe maybe gets a little more playing time. But there's definitely some things that we need to look at. Again, the Cards are a good team. Give credit to them. They they deserve that win. They outplayed the Rams. But uh, we have a short week. We got a rebound quick. We got another divisional matchup against the Seattle team that just had a big win. And uh, yeah, there's no time to be salty about it. Uh, you know, we, we have to move on and know that the season's long. And uh, that's that's my five takeaways. Let me know what yours are. I'm uh, you know always curious what other people are saying and or, and you know what they're seeing and and yeah, I just love talking football. So like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. All right, the next part of our uh, show today is a segment that we've been uh, every week looking at. So this is the graphic for week three. Uh, this was after the Buccaneers game. Uh, we are comparing the 2001 season of Kurt Warner to the 2021 season of Matt Stafford. Uh, this was the season that Kurt Warner set the franchise passing record of 4,830 yards. And uh, so as you can see, Stafford was only behind by eight yards after week three. But this week, Stafford, unfortunately, did not have that great of a week. And uh, so, yes, the uh, we are now uh, – Stafford is 3-1 and one where Kurt was 4-0. Uh, and oh. uh, The passing yards, uh, he's down by 26 yards now. So still, you know, in range, in range. Uh, Kurt had one more passing touchdown than Stafford did at this point in the season. And uh, Kurt Warner had one more interception than Stafford did. So, you know, Stafford is <laughs> leading Kirk in that in that category there. But uh, definitely I'm looking for, I do this each and every week. I'm really looking forward to seeing if Stafford can break the Rams franchise passing record in 16 games. So let me know in the comments below if you think he can do it. I'm really, you know, Every Monday, you'll get this. Uh, I cut it as a clip, but it's also part of the Rams Breakfast Club episode. Anyway, guys, I'm uh, really curious to see uh, you know what we do with this Seattle Seahawks game. I think that we have the potential to have a huge bounce back game. I really would love the Rams to get a big you know win where we just whoop them. 
<laughs> that would be amazing. But we'll have to wait and find out. It's hard to say, very hard to say. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's Rams Breakfast Club. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't make this a live stream today like I normally like to. Uh, I'll definitely have some other things coming up later in the week. So stay tuned for that. And please consider subscribing if you love talking football. Uh, I know uh, I had a fantastic live stream at the Cardinals and Rams uh, watch party on us on on sunday that was a lot of fun I, th I think we had over 400 people in there at one point so that blew my mind so thank you everyone who tuned into that that was so cool and yeah i'm excited to see what happens next with this youtube journey but ultimately i care about the rams that loss is behind us and we have a big season in front of us gotta keep looking to the future and right now the future is a Seahawks team that they're two and two and they're still playing desperate. So hopefully we can uh, get them below 500 again. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like comment and subscribe all that jazz. I'm Peo time and I'm peacing out. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Rams breakfast club. Have a fantastic day. Wake up, wake up, wipe your eyes and set your alarm clocks to pay old time. It's time to get your morning started up. And tune in to the Rams Breakfast Club. Waking up ain't easy, there's growing pains. Come greet the morning and let's move them chains. Pour some hot black java in your commuter cup. Tune in to the Rams Breakfast Club. Tune in to the Rams Breakfast Club.